Hi guys, welcome back to the Technologies with me Dito Pulungan and today we are going to learn how to connect shell to solid elements in Abacus. Uh, usually you want to do it because you want to do like a local approach, uh, more detailed analysis. For example, if you have a very big part and then there's a crack in one part, of course, you don't want to model the whole part using solid elements, but you just want to model the part that is near to the crack with solid element, while the rest of it, you can model it using a cheap conventional shell element. So you just focus on the place where the crack occurs. I imagine a case like this. Imagine you have a pipe. Imagine you have a pipe. Uh, it's a two kilometers long pipe and then somewhere in the pipe there's a crack here you don't want to and, and then the pipe still functioning you just want to do some analysis whether this crack that is happening in the crack right now is really dangerous or can we still use the pipe for quite some time so you want to do analysis safety analysis and in this case, you don't need to model everything using solid elements. So what people do usually, they only make partition and only focus on the area where you have this, this crack. You model it using a 3D element with some cracks here. And then you connect another part using shell element, which is very cheap, right? So how to do this connection? And this is not only in the pipe. Imagine, for example, you have a very big panel of a composite, and then it has been indented by something like bird or tooling drops. You want to model the tooling drops effect on this damage of this composite laminate. So what people do is that they can model it, this part using a 3D while the rest using 2D. So they can just focus on the area where the impact happened so that they can get accurate analysis. For example, they can model it using mesoscale modeling where each ply of the composite is modeled uh, explicitly so they can see the delimination. Is it occurring or not? And okay and and that kind of analysis so this is a localized analysis so you need to know how to connect these two kinds of elements a two-dimensional shell elements and a 3d solid elements uh, so the, the the options now you have two options either using tie contact so basically you tie everything the kinematics of the ply and the oh no, of the 2d shell or the 3d or by using in abacus what we will see is by using shell to solid coupling of course because as the name mentions you should use this one but i want to i want to explain to you why we cannot use this tie for this kind of problem so we're going to oh, by the way, this is my Google Scholars. If my YouTube channel happened to help you in your research and you write papers, please at least cite my papers because uh, all the knowledge that I am presenting right now is coming during the effort of making this paper. And maybe one of them is related to your research. Please, guy, and subscribe to this channel because it really, really uh, make me motivated to always update this channel. Uh, if you subscribe okay to my channel all right uh, okay let's come back again uh, so we are going to do this uh, so what we are going to do is we are going to make a a pipe for example uh, let's let's make a random sizing I'm not sure how much how big well let's see i have a i don't know how much uh 20 centimeters which means the radius is uh, 10 centimeters or 100 millimeters right 10 centimeters 100 millimeters radius okay and now i'm going to have a 10 millimeter tick 
uh, pipe, thick pipe. In this case, I'm using pipe, uh, but it can be implemented to any kind of, of structures that needs a local uh, analysis. So let's make another one. And then this another one, the radius will be 90. So I have a 10 millimeter tick. Okay. And then uh, I have this 20 centimeters length. This is the area that I want to zoom in. The, so it's 20. It means 200 millimeters, right? Yeah, this is the area that is going to be uh, zoomed in. We want to model as a solid. And then we the other part, we are going to make another part using 3D, but now it's shell. Uh, we are going to extrude it. So now, because we are going to use shell, so our shell will represent the mid plane of the of the pipe so we need to make a circular here with a radius of the inner uh, of the middle surface of the pipe which is 90 pipe inner diameter was 90 right uh, no inner radius was 90 and outer radius was 100 so the middle one is the the 95 okay and then we're going to model it a uh, I don't know one meter. Oh no, not one meter. Yeah, it can be like one kilometer or whatever you want. Uh well one one thousand millimeters we means one meter, right? Yeah. Or ten meters. It, it's it's up to you. Uh, but one meter is enough. Yeah, I think you get the point, right? And then you want to make sure that, uh, okay, now let's make the properties. Now for sake of simplicity, we will assume they are made of steel. So elasticity with young models of 200,000 uh, MPA with Poisson ratio 0 0.3. And there's nothing special, yeah. If you want to model the plasticity, you can model the plasticity, but in this case, I'm not sure. Let's make it the plasticity if you want. Uh, imagine if this guy is uh, plastic, can plastically forming. Uh, wait, wait a minute, plasticity at a yield stress, or let's say, let's say 400 MPA plastic strain zero. And 500 MPA, plastic strain 0 0.1, 10 percent, and then at 600, uh, plastic strain will be 0 0.3, and then 700, plastic strain will be 0 0.6, and then that's it, yeah. And then a little fracture. All right, so we already have the material that ha that has elastic plastic behavior following von Mises criteria. And now we are going to create two sections. The first section is for the, the the detail location, the detailed part that is a solid with homogeneous. Okay, and then we will create another section with shell. But uh, now the shell, we're going to use the shell, right? It's the same thing. The shell thickness is how much the thickness is 10 because that's the thickness of the pipe. And we're the same material one. Okay. And then we're going to assign for the part two. Part two is the shell. Let's do it start with part one. Let's do it part one. This is the solid section one. And then for the part two, we make uh, this guy. We select this guy. So in order to select very fast, you know. When you do it like this, you have this click button, but actually you can just simply push or click your roller in your mouse. So clicking your roller means clicking done. So after choosing like this, you, you're, you're dragging like this, I just click my my roller 
it's done so it's quicker okay rather than simply rather than traveling your mouse and click down manually so shell offset is middle surface right okay click okay it's nice now assembly went to assembly we have two part and then uh, and then you want to click auto offset just to make it easy now you want to translate the instance this is the detail location the detail part that we that uh, we're going to model with solid so you want to transform this guy you want to connect you want to locate them correctly click done uh, this guy moves to here so uh, let me repeat again so you need to click this guy translate instance Select the instance to move, click done or click the roller, and then choose this mid point and move to this guy. Okay, now it's moving, click OK. Now everything is good. Yeah, because we want to select a tie constraint. Oh no, no need, no need for this case. Just do it, it's like this, it's okay. Uh, now we're going to step, uh, create step static general continue uh, we can have a nonlinear geometry if you want because i want to bend this guy this shell elements and yeah same and i'm always i really like to use this one because we have contact here so we're going to use contact tie or anything coupling make sure this guy is small enough so you add 1000 that's better and then for the fill output the same all the time evenly space time interval 100 uh, we will not use any damage here and then failure no failure yeah okay and then we want to make sure same thing here 100 okay so you finish your step interaction now this is the most important part now we want to model using the tie okay uh, we're going to use the tie we are you know the this one tie create concern tie and then the master type the master type will be this guy surface so you choose this surface okay uh, this surface Okay, click done and then you choose the slave type the slave type will be the node of this okay so you choose node region and then you choose this shell it's it's really difficult uh, make sure you choose only this line okay 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 now what you're going to do is that you're going to constrain the node and the surface will have the kinematics the same kinematics right so they will tie their rotational degree of freedom if possible and all that stuff they will have the same kinematic it means that the u of this shell will be the u of this node in that surface I'm not sure you will understand what I'm saying, but the idea is that the nodal displacement of this surface will have the same nodal displacement of these shell elements, including the rotation and translations. And then done, we already tie, and then you need to, to make the load. And to make the load, it's quite easy. Uh, let's just fix this guy. As usual, click here and click done, and bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, so you click everything and then you click again here. Continue. Okay. So you are pulling. Bum, 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 bum. But the only difference now that you are going to twist it up. So you want to make sure that. The Y has, uh, I don't know how much, one meter, one meter is 1,000, 100, no, yeah, that's, that's 100, 100 millimeter, okay. 
okay so you are doing like that okay or maybe minus okay so they were pulling down imagine this is like the situation when you have earthquake so your pipe will vibrate right and you do it in the mesh and then you do the okay let's do it in the part part one okay nice oh let me make a better one it's too large maybe uh, i don't know how five five maybe five millimeters oh it's not good let's assign mass control i want hex sweep okay it's already good but why why they don't do it nicely maybe four i'm not sure why they don't mesh nicely okay let's make a this guy i'm not sure you have it there yeah you don't have the place to to make this partition or local seed mass or let's make it two gonna be expensive why okay or if you want you can simply go to the part again and then you make a principal offset from that for making that in plane so we are going to cut in the yz plane on the yz plane right zero and then you are going to do this okay oh no using click and hold and then you will choose this one partition cell by using datum plane and then select datum plane here because you only have one one part here shown so just click create partition done okay and then your job go in no you go back to your mesh again then now you can mess it nicely you can use steel 4 i think yeah they're nice or maybe three not sure say uh, let's say i want to make it four I want to enforce four. That's why I create partition it's to make sure uh, to to enable me to choose this line. Without partition, I cannot choose that line, right? Okay. Yes. Okay. Good. Nice. It's well made. All right. Or maybe I don't need to. Uh, maybe four is enough. So I do. Yeah, this is good enough. So let's go to part two. Uh, do, you want, do you think we need to make partition too? We can make partition if you want. Okay. Make that plane again. YZ. Enter. You have this one. Okay. Uh, we don't have geometric cell. Can we? You partition face using datum plane, okay. Select a datum plane, okay. Now done, and then you can mesh it. You need to assign mesh control, click mesh control, and then to make a better mesh structure using quad only. Done, and then I don't know. You can use maybe five. Yeah, but it's only shell element, so it's not expensive or even bigger because we want to make faster simulation because this area is not important, right? We use shell because we don't care about this area because the area that has crack is the solid one, the solid pipe. <coughs> and then for the uh, element type, make sure we're using shell. Yes, great, great. Second order accuracy enhance okay done and then for part one i forgot to assign make sure it's a 3d stress stress yes and then enhance 
and then okay done all right it's nice now uh for the load let, let's make sure everything's okay right now yeah still okay still okay so now let's run the job continue parallelization choose two and then click submit i hope it works and then all right it takes a long time so let me pause it hi guys welcome back to the channel so we're going to see the results so far now it's not finished still running because my computer is so slow so let's check so this is the pipe right now as you can see here let's see here in this isometric view Why it's still here? It's supposed to output fifty one right now. Yeah, so it's not really clear here. The Abacus database won't update. I think we were supposed to have a data until frame 51 because now if you see the monitor has been 51, but I'm not really sure why this guy cannot show until frame 51. but anyway let's see so when you're dealing this is i make a cross section of it yeah so you can see here when you're dealing with a tie what happened is that basically abacus tie the nodal displacement of the shell with the nodal displacement of the solid only the one who really touch the shell who are directly uh, touching the shell so if you see here uh, abacus only tie the nodes of the shell and these nodes i mean the nodes here one two three four all around it's not this whole face not the whole face of the solid so this kind of tying is wrong okay if you see here so that due to your tie, there is a stress concentration in the pipe here. But actually, there shouldn't be any stress concentration, right? Uh, so this is, how to say, a, a, a wrong approach to connect a shell to a, a solid elements. You should not use a tie constraint because this is what happened. Uh, and luckily, I cannot show you a more, uh, how to say, my god it's really i don't know yeah, but uh, i i think you can understand right now what i'm uh, what i'm saying is that you shouldn't use tie when you're connecting here you can see here because when you use tie they only tie the shell and the notes of the solid that is directly connect to the shell itself not the whole face of the solid huh? so it's different so, so this is not appropriate to to do that your stress analysis will be wrong oh you can see here there is a problem oh no it's already good you see oh no oh we're lucky that finally i can i can get this you see all the notes become problematic 
because now you only pull the nodes that directly connect. So what happened is that you have this stress concentration. Ah, you see, you see. Now, can you see the problem? Why I said you should not use tie, because the tie only happen, uh, only applied uh, to the nodes that is from the shell, and to the node from the solid that directly connects, not to the whole nodes on the face of the of this solid, not not the whole nodes, but only only to the node that is directly in contact. These nodes, they are not. Uh, tied to this guy only these nodes. That's why it, it create problems when you use tie for connecting shell and solid So how to avoid this kind of thing? You should not use tie to avoid this don't use tie So let me kill it because now we can already see the result. I don't think you need further further uh, results anymore if you want to use it correctly if you want to connect shell and solid you should use this interaction and instead of that one you need to use this guy this is the other shell to solid coupling this is the correct one so you click continue you click the surface the master surface is this one select the cell edges okay this one okay just solid region type surface. You want to make sure that your shell is coupled with the surface, right? Okay. Now, if you see here, let's suppress the tie. Yeah, I I deactivated uh, the 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 tie. So if you run again, let's say shell to solid coupling. If you do it. The simulation usually will be faster as far as I know because it's easier to converge. Let's see. So you just need to use the correct coupling, okay? Don't use tie for this kind of problem because the problem that kind of problem that I show you before will occur, okay? I will show you later again, but make sure now it's running. While we're waiting for this running, I will explain again to you why you should not use tie. Okay. Now let's make sure this is running first, and then we will start discussing about why you should not use tie. I think it's running good. So yeah, again, come back. So let me explain again. Imagine you have a solid like this, and then at the edge of the solid, you have several nodes. Node one, two, three, four, five. So there's one, two, three, four, five. This is the edge of the 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 solid elements, okay, of the solid part. And then here you only have the shell element with only one node when you when you do the tie uh the abacus will check this node where is the closest node he let's say this is node node uh, node six so what happened is basically he will find this guy is the closest projection so and then abacus will say that the u6 in x direction is u6 no u3 in x direction u6 in y direction u3 in y direction u6 in z direction is equal to u3 in z direction so what when you use tie this is what is happening abacus only connecting this guy to the one that is closest to him so basically you just connecting this node and this node this is wrong because in reality when you want to to tie something between shell and solid 
you want to make sure that you tie from this guy to the whole nodes in the surface, right? In this face. You want to connect that. So you want to connect the 5 to the 6, 4 to the 6, 3 to the 6. So you need to use actually a multi point constraint like this. So this is what you should do. So when this guy rotating, for example, 30 degree, it's not this guy rotating 30 degree. When you use tie, this is what happened. If this guy rotating 30 degree, this guy only rotating 30 degree, while the other guy, they don't rotate. But when you use shell coupling, shell to uh, solid coupling, what happened when this guy rotate 30 degree, this whole face, let me, let me make it bigger. Yeah, this whole face will rotate 30 degree like this. This is what happened. This is what you want to do. So now 30 degree, right? Because now you couple the one point of the shell not with each node but to the whole face of the solid that's why you should not use tie because when you do tying what is happening actually they only match they only uh, control this guy the node of the shell and the closest projection uh, of the node in the in the face of the solid which is wrong which is wrong okay so what you they need to do is basically they need to tie the whole face to the the node of the shell elements how to do that you need to use shell to solid coupling okay this is okay not tie okay this is wrong okay so i just want to mention that because this is really important if you're connecting uh two elements with different architecture one a solid one shell don't use tie don't use tie you can only use tie you can only uh allow to use tie when you're connecting uh elements with the same uh, dig, uh with the same uh how to say the same dimension you, you want to connect solid to solid okay or maybe you want to connect uh, shell to shell okay but not shell to solid if you want to use shell to solid don't use tie but use uh, shell to uh solid coupling huh so you can use it here where is it in interaction uh, instead of uh, how to say instead of using this guy you use this guy shell to solid coupling okay i hope it makes it i hope i can i i, I make it very clear for you guys huh okay let's check again the oh it's still a long time to wait so i will just pause it again and resume when it's done okay all right welcome back to this tutorial so it's not yet finished but if we see it's already at 0 0.1 from the total one seconds so let's see what we can see i'm sure we can already we can already see the difference you see here now that the stress contour is really like uniform continuous right and they're not concentrated the stress is not concentrated in the mid part of the solid element anymore so if we compare uh, let, let, let's check uh, to so we now reach 11 you see here they're very nicely nicely connected right very nicely connected and if you want to compare, it's a frame 11, huh? If we compare with the, the one with the tie at the frame 11, 
Okay. The frame 11, you can start to see here that the shell element only pulling a certain notes that directly connects to the shell only. Yeah? Certain notes from the, the face, from the, from the solid face that directly connect to the shell. So they only pull this kind of notes, not this, the whole face, not the whole face. Yeah. So they don't pull the whole face, they only pull the notes from the face that directly connect to the shell notes itself. So you can see here that as the the loading becomes bigger, they create a bigger problem, our glassing and so on, stress concentration. So your stress analysis is totally wrong when you're using tie to connect the shell and the uh, and the solid, but uh, it's it's correct if you're using the coupling solid to shell coupling, as you can see here in this ODB, it's it's really nice. They don't have problem like that. Yeah, so that's the point of this video to 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 show you to emphasize to you that. When you're connecting 2D and 3D elements, uh, don't use tie, but use the solid to shell coupling. Okay. I hope this video can be helpful for you, useful for you for your research. And if that is the case, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and comment below, and cite my my paper, my publication, in case you manage to publish something. Okay. Thanks for today and goodbye.